As a superhero, I'm gonna start fighting crime. Oh, I'm sorry, Professor. You all right? I'm taken. Um, Professor? Ah, oh, shit! Ugh. Come here, Fuzzy Wuzzy! Do you think a measly bullet's gonna kill me? Well, you're very correct. Ah, oh, get the hell off of me! Um, Deadpool? What are you doing? I'm kicking my ass! Do you mind? By the way, brains are not meant to talk. They're meant for in having inner voices and possibly thinking. What is going on guys? Ultimate Deadpool here, back with another video. Uh, sorry I've been gone for a couple days. Uh, big stuff going on around the house right now. Um, boring stuff you don't want to hear about. Um, so anyway, we got three brand new figures to talk about today. So let's go ahead and jump right into them, starting with our first guy. Alright, first up we have the fourth version of Slash that I have. I'm not kidding, this make, this guy seriously makes four versions of him. Um, I found this guy at my local comic book store, thought it was really cool. And uh, it was not inexpensive, but it wasn't cheap either. Um, this dude is freaking awesome. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite versions of Slash. Um, he comes with a ton of accessories. He's got a freaking mace on a stick or club or whatever you want to call this thing uh, makeshift nunchuck with spikes um, the lightning bolt stabby sword dagger thing um, both a small version and a long version um, removable shurikens there is one that also goes on this side I couldn't get it to go on for some reason and this is not the NECA corporation that does this this is the Super 7 so if you guys wanted to try to get this figure, it's the Super 7 Slash. Um, he does have a cricket, crooked smile. He comes with an alternative head where it's just him smiling right here um, in the standard Ninja Turtle face. Um, he's got a gigantic sword with pink wood, oddly enough. Um, there's a lot of pink on this figure, which I'm surprised that they did. Um, but actually, it's, it's pretty... I, I don't mind the pink. I think it actually stands, makes it stand out a little bit more. Um, he's got pink uh, hooks or spikes on his knees, uh, pink shoulder pads, pink wristbands, elbow pads, spikes, um, and essentially pink weapons with the exception of his main sword and his main uh, small dagger. Otherwise, he's got pretty much pink weapons, so that's kind of fun uh, for people who like the color pink. I actually don't mind the color pink um, because, long story short, my dad's mom had breast cancer, and uh, yeah, so I've always respected the color pink. So, um, really nice detail work on this thing, actually. I'm amazed at how much detail they actually got into this thing. Um, cause this is, like I said, this is not the same guys I usually get my Ninja Turtle figure stuff from. Um, it's a completely different company, but they do not skimp out on the details. There's a whole bunch of like cuts and stuff on his chest. The detail on his skin alone is like ridiculous. Uh, his shell has unbelievable amounts of detail. Like the, the spikes themselves are cracked. In certain areas, there's slash marks and cuts and stuff all over his back. He has a freaking tail that his tail can move. Um, so it was turned around the other way. I turned it around this way to make it look less um, phallic looking. And then, uh, like overall, this is just a beautiful figure. If I had to rank all the slash, I'll do a video or a post at some point um, asking you guys which slash figure is the best one or best looking one and whichever slash wins uh, will be the probably the mainstream slash for whenever I use him in future videos um, this one's not bad I do I will say I like the other one slightly better um, the the you know second or third version of slash um, that I have because it's it's more contained and it just looks more streamlined. This just looks like it's all over the place, but in a good way. 
Um, so I will definitely use this version of Slash in several videos, but expect the other, the darker green to be the, or Hulk-like green Slash to be the main one moving forward. Um, I will still do the poll on which one you guys think is better. Uh, but it's probably not going to actually lead into the mainstream one. So I've spent too much time on Slash. Let's go ahead and go on to the next guy. All right. Now we've got the Kevin e or the Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Utrom. Now, it's Utrom, not Utrom. I've heard it both ways. It's called. It's actually pronounced Utrom. It's not Utrom. So, um, the Utrom actually looks really good. Um looks very similar to the comic books obviously because it's dubbed the comic books version of the Utrom um, but you know if you've ever watched the 2003's 4 kids show they didn't change a whole lot with this design uh, there are a few small minor things that they change but all of that is pretty much the exact same thing uh, this thing has a lot of really good poseability I didn't really mention that on Slash earlier he's got a bunch of poseability as well about the same typical stuff as every other character, but since this is a robot, uh, the upper part can move, the midsection um, and upper part can move. Uh, his legs obviously have good poseability. His legs can bend also really well. Uh, feet able to turn and whatnot. Um, several different pose abilities and the arm, um, as well as obviously his head. Um, the Utrom is able to come out, so you can have the little alien come out, which I think is cool. Um, and they actually add a couple of detail, a little bit of detail work inside. I don't know if you can see that really well, but there is some detail work inside the robotic body, which I think is really cool because you know, say, again, this this is actually from the NECA guys, as you can see right up here. They act, they go full out with their detail work, and I love that they do that. Because details for some people are so mean so much, it's ridiculous. Like it, this looks like you took a com like a two D thing and just like pulled it into three D, and then boom, this is what you get. Uh, it's unbelievable on how much stuff they got right on this. Uh, the Utrom does robot does come with four other hands, um, as well as an alternative head, which is right here. It's just miss. It's a battle damaged head with an eye falling out of it. Um, and then if you look on the back of the box art, it's the same principle. He also comes with two wrenches. So he's got the gun, which he's holding right now. And then the wrench here. And then you can have the battle damage uh, head that you can clearly see right here. So um, I'm going to give the Utrom design and posability. And I, overall as a figure, I'm going to give it an 8. I wish I could give it a uh, 10 because this is okay. I'll give I'll take that back. I'll give it a nine. Uh, but the main reason I did not give it a 10 is because I wish that the box uh, looked like the other ones. I wish they had done kind of like what they did with the universal monster turtles. I wish they had done and like the last Ronin and stuff like that. I wish they had done the boxes like that, but I can understand why they did the smaller, simpler things because it is a smaller, simpler you know, action figure that you're getting, not something that's, you know, seven inches or, well, this is still about seven inches, but it's, you don't, there's not something as elaborate as the Ninja Turtles or not as popular as the Ninja Turtles. You just have, you know, the Utrom and Future Toy. Future Toy's going to get the same thing when we get to him in a minute, but all in all, really good design work, really good posability. I'm still going to stick with my nine out of 10. Uh, this is a really good figure. Expect the Utrom to show up in at least one or two videos, at least. <laughs> um, he may show this character may show up um, in future videos, and I may try to get more or at least one more to have like a alien invasion slight thing to improvise type shit. But um, expect the Utrom to show up in at least one video um, moving forward. Hopefully, it'll work out really well, and we'll go from there. So, again, spent too much time on this guy. Let's move on to the last guy. All right, we're going to save probably the best character for last, and I stress the word best. Um, before we get started, I don't know if you guys know this, if I, and I could be wrong on this, but I highly doubt it. Um, the Future Toid was actually the first ever Ninja Turtles character ever created. 
Uh, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, before they actually created the Ninja Turtles, they had a character called the Fugitoid, uh, which looked pretty much like this, except it had a little bit more, uh, diff it had different arms and different legs, but the body was basically the same. They created that character first, but they didn't know what to put it with. They didn't know what they could use the Fugitoid for, so they just kind of sidelined that character while they were still doing their other stuff uh, before they created the Ninja Turtles. And then they accidentally created the Ninja Turtles one night when they were bored. And they're like, hey, let's throw the future toy in with this. And then it just kind of went from there. So fun. that's a little bit of a fun fact for you. Um, future toy was always one of my favorite characters growing up as a kid. Uh, mostly from the 2003's 4 Kids show at the time. Um, I was so pissed when they killed him off. But I was so thankful when they brought him back. Even though his uh, alternative body looked a little weird. But, I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> Um, so, Future Toy here actually does have, um, for me, that has a couple, at least one, bleh, I cannot talk today. Future Toy comes with one accessory that is, uh, was used in one of my favorite episodes of the 2003's 4 Kids show. We'll get to that here in a minute. Um, so, just like, um... The Utron, this is obviously pulled directly from the comic books. This is the Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic book Future Toid. This is basically how he looked like in the comic books. As you can see here on the back of the box. So, I will say, um, his box is slightly better than the Utron. Because the Utron is literally just the same robot in different, different areas. And it's like, oh, hey, look, here pose here oh here wrench here oh here look i'm on top here oh look i'm laying on the leg right here at least with future toy they have you know michelangelo and future toy future toy holding up two guns like it's a stick off future toy in handcuffs future toy with the zero gravity or the gravity equalizer like that's so fun versus and which is otherwise just a plain boring box but you know what the that's fine. You know, Future Toy comes with four other hands. Um, the handcuffs, like I just pointed out. Uh, two guns, aside from this one. And the tri a Triceraton uh, blaster as well. Um, so, like I said, this is... This particular accessory that he comes with is called the Gravity Equalizer. At least it was in the 2003's 4 Kids show. Um, if I'm not mistaken, in the comic books, it was actually a Future Toy invention uh, that he created. But then it's kind of cool that they kind of paid homage to that particular idea uh, in the 4Kids show as well. Uh, there's an episode where Donatello meets uh, Jack Kirby. And uh, he, Jack Kirby has this crystal that he can draw stuff with. And the stuff that he draws comes to life, but only for a short time. They end up going into his notebook, essentially, world and... Uh, he quickly whips up this thing for Donatello to help him fight some monsters. And they take out monsters with zero gravity. So, kind of fun. Um, I think that's actually where I got the idea for Gravity Man, now that I think about it. Um, Future Toid is poseable. Uh, believe it or not, he's got some metal wires um, in his arms and legs. So his arms and legs can bend. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to. Um, he did not have... Uh, holes for his feet so he could actually stand on these base plates. I had to fix that myself. So so for you purists out there, I'm so sorry. I pissed you off. Um, his head also can obviously, you know, rotate whenever. Um, mine, I don't know if it's just mine that has this problem, but the one on the, the joint on the very top up here, because his head is comprised of two different joints. It's the head, the neck, and then the body. Uh, the one for the, that connects to the head, like, up oh, here is, like, completely stiff. And will not budge at all, so he just kind of has like a crooked neck, um, which is not a bad thing. It just kind of looks a little off-putting. But anyway, really good detail work on Future Toid. Um, I really like how they just again, it's just like the Utrom. They took basically a 2D image, pulled it up, and made it 3D, and then this is what you get from that. I really do like how they did the the shadow effects on the body to make it look more comic booky. Um, on both sides, I think that's a really good touch. So, and then obviously his weapons and whatnot look really cool, especially with this one being a slight nostalgic thing for me because I know what it is and from what episode they were paying homage for. Or this 
pay, that episode paying homage to this invention that Future Toid has. So, I'm going to give Future Toid probably a 9.5 out of 10, just because, you know, his box is better than the, than the Utrom. He's got, you know, for me, a slight nostalgic uh, tool. Um, the detail work is really good, and they were also able to include poses without having to completely screw up the character uh, with having just simple metal wires and the legs and arms um, to make the figure fully posable just like any other thing that they have when he has scrawny ass little robotic arms and legs. So really nice feature all around for people who want to pose Future Toid in a in certain poses you can actually do that because his arms can bend with metal wires so that's pretty much it for this video um future toid will also appear in a couple of videos um most importantly future toid will be appearing in the uh multiversal ninja turtles movie that i still have planned and is still not canceled i keep getting that all the time people are like oh you've canceled this movie oh you've canceled this idea no, that project has been in the works for the last two and a half years. I'm not going to pull the plug on it. I'm waiting for other stuff to get finished or started first. And then once I have that stuff started, I can go ahead and start doing the stuff that I would like to do uh, with that particular series or movie. So, all the characters that I will say this all three characters that you have just seen today, Slash, Future Toid, the Utron, they will all appear in that particular film. So, just stay tuned for that. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy that when it finally does come out. But, um, like I said, U uh, Future Toid, Utrom, and Sla that uh, th fourth version of Slash will appear in future videos. This version of Future Toid is going to show up quite a bit because he's really the only Future Toid I have, aside from the 2003's Future Toid. But uh, my youngest, my little brother, uh, screwed it up by accident because uh, he likes to bend thi or liked to bend things when he was younger to the extent of them breaking and yeah so anyway that's pretty much it thank you guys again so much for watching for those of you who stuck around this long i really do appreciate it and if you guys have stuck around with me for me going on and off like this for the last few weeks months whatever um i really do appreciate it i am trying to keep on making more videos as much as i can um but only unfortunately though my personal life behind the cameras is getting really convoluted and really ridiculous so um, again thank you guys again and I will catch you guys all later bye